Hi, I'm Mark Krebs. I work at uh, Avidine's Boulder Division. I wanted to tell you a little bit about our DFC 100 Autopilot. Uh, some of the cool things about it, why you uh, might want to have this Autopilot in your Cirrus. Um, number one, so you know, it's uh, fully integrated with the uh, Integra Release 9 hardware and software that a lot of you are getting now. And it's quite an easy replacement. It goes in in about an hour. You just pull out the uh, control head and put in the DFC 100 and you're ready to go. Shouldn't really require any retraining. Um, first, the features, all the usual stuff, all the usual knobs and buttons you'd expect. Uh, some that are uh, perhaps a little atypical. Of course, there's GPSS. There's an indicated airspeed mode used for climbs and descent and of course VS heading out, approach, etc. Um, some of the neat things about it, you can, uh, well you can acquire the uh, localizer from all angles. You can do a localizer acquisition from 180 degrees off course if you want, and that'll work just fine. Uh, all the buttons can be turned off. If you're in a mode, you press it to do it and press it again to turn it off, and you'll revert back to the previous mode, pitch and roll, hold. Uh, there's going to be control wheel steering, and there's going to be toga. Those are two features that will be coming in the future because you don't have those buttons now on your, on your uh, yokes and throttles, uh, but the autopilot has those capabilities. Uh, very significantly, I think, you'll find that you're not going to see the uh, waggles or porpoising or oscillating that you see in other autopilots. We have really cured all of that stuff. The thing flies right on rail smooth all the time. Um, there's a very good flight director. You can fly the flight director if you want. That's been a problem with other autopilots where it bounces around too much or it gives kind of bad guidance that causes PIO. Uh, this autopilot flight director, you can just follow it and you'll fly to uh, good approaches and turns uh, with it. When you go into a, a turn uh, in altitude hold, you won't lose more than 30, maybe 40 feet at most. Uh, at the onset of the turn and at the end it'll balloon up maybe 20 feet at the end. So good uh, good performance during turns. Tightly integrated with the FMS, accepts vectors commands, accepts guidance from the FMS, so on and so forth. Um, the real reason though that you ought to consider this autopilot is safety. It's got some very powerful uh, safety characteristics to it. One is, and this is an easy way to turn the autopilot on, it's not a feature that you uh, uh, have to be cautious about. We have this straight and level button and you can press that button at any time, in any orientation, any attitude, any speed and the autopilot will do its very best to uh, get the airplane down to zero pitch and roll, steady, straight and level flight. And so that's, as I say, a quick method to turn the autopilot on. If you're busy, you're worrying about traffic, you're getting set up for something and you just need to get your hands off the yoke and your mind off the flying the airplane, you can just push that button at any time and you're into a, a safe attitude uh, recovery mode. Another one is there's something we call envelope protection, continuous envelope protection. Whenever the autopilot or flight director is engaged, it's impossible to stall the aircraft and it's impossible to overspeed the aircraft. We continuously calculate the uh, total lift available, compare it to the, the, the speed state the amount of turn, the amount of climbing that we're doing, and make sure we don't exceed the maximum available lift. And the autopilot in a climb or a climbing turn will actually push the nose down a little if it has to to prevent uh, uh, departure. That is available in all modes. And so one thing that you can do that I did this morning, it's a very powerful feature. We're in an SR20. It's a hot day here in Boulder. We're heavily loaded. We can barely climb at all. We set the altitude command up to 15,000 feet, 1,000 feet per minute, climb, go. Airplane surges up to 1,000 feet per minute and would have stalled almost immediately. Envelope protection pushes it down, end up climbing at a nice even 90, 92 knots and the best climb rate that the aircraft could manage. So it's an uh, uh, excellent safety feature that's always there and you don't have to even think about it. In fact, it will often kick in and you wouldn't even know. Um, except that it'll, you know, put up an enunciation for you to detect. Uh, finally, performance, of course, has something to do with this. Uh, one of the reasons this thing is safe is because it flies so well. Uh, today, we flew down to minimums with a 35 knot crosswind shear, meaning there was uh, no crosswind when we started, and by the time we got halfway down the glide slope, we had 35 knots, 
no problem, fluid minimums, dead on target when we, when we um, did our go around. So we're very proud of that. There's a, a lot of uh, effort went into that, a lot of technology effort. And um, you'll find this to be a great autopilot. Some of the technology behind this is uh, pretty interesting. It's not um, something you have to care about, but it might be neat to hear about. One is, of course, that we've got a um, digital autopilot uh, getting data from a fully digital strap down attitude and heading reference system. That's very powerful because it's a much better sensor suite than the autopilot that's in your airplane right now has. And um, that better data allows the autopilot to perform better. We have um, estimators to continuously calculate things like vertical speed with no lag. And that reduces uh, or eliminates really things like porpoising or overshoots uh, in, in modes like VS or altitude capture or um, oscillations when you're on altitude at high speeds. Those things are solved because of the improved, more capable uh, attitude and air data sensing. Uh, two is with the, the digital autopilot, of course, you can have more complex algorithms. Uh, significant, uh, you can have scheduled autopilot performance so that as the airspeed, for instance, changes and the handling characteristics of the aircraft change a little bit, the autopilot changes to adapt with it. And that's all pre-programmed in and it means uh, basically better performance across the entire flight envelope from, from near stall to red line. Um, Servo control. This is one of the neatest things about this autopilot. We did it all without without servos. Of course, that's not true. We and we've done a whole servo development program here, but didn't need it for this plane. We're using for the DFC 100 the same uh, Globe Motor Cirrus supplied uh, uh, planetary geared uh, spring cartridge equipped pitch and roll trim servos uh, that are in your airplane right now with their harness and everything. Um, and the same s -Tech pitch autopilot servo, uh, same motor manufacturer clutched geared uh, disengage uh, mechanism, the one that's in there now, we're using that servo suite. And uh, we're very proud and it was no small stretch to make it all work with that stuff. Um, of course Garmin's come out with an autopilot and they had to replace all the servos. Uh, well, I'm very pleased that we were able to get uh, fantastic performance that I think you will find compares favorably with the Garmin Autopilot and certainly exceeds the um, Aztec Autopilot capabilities using those servos. There's nothing wrong with those servos and in fact as you notice the servo has a connector on it and the end of this connector's got three wires on it and at the other end of this wire is a servo driver and that's really a very big part of the servo. Without that the servo is just a motor. It's really not a servo. It's a motor and a gear train. A servo is something that do, does what you tell it. And the reason it does is because of the electronics drive circuitry at the other end of this wire, which is digital and very capable. And so we have some effort put into making these servos perform really well and taking into account all the characteristics of the spring cartridges. Uh, as an aside, I'm uh, not at all disturbed by the way Cirrus set the airplane up. I think it's inventive. It's uh, low tech, and I mean that in a good way, you know, solid, reliable, simple systems and um, quality parts and no reason the autopilot with these servos shouldn't go on flying forever. Um, I mentioned the three servos we do use, the pitch trim servo with its spring cartridge, the roll trim servo with its spring cartridge, and uh, optionally the um, S-Tech autopilot pitch servo. You don't have to have that if you've got one of the original 800 airplanes without the um, Without the STEC servo, um, the DFC 100 will work with that. Um, you don't have to have the yaw damper system. We support it if you've got it. That's totally optional. And you certainly don't need the uh, roll autopilot servo. So those are things that we've uh, managed to, flexibilities we've managed to build into the design. Thanks very much. Uh, hope you'll buy my autopilot, and I'm sure you'll like it.